relay a pat. What happens when you throw a robot in the mix? Savvy Oak had only been in business for a few months. They'd focused on getting the design and engineering right. They'd negotiated the pilot with Starwood, a hotel chain with hundreds of properties. But they still had big questions to answer. Mission-critical, make-or-break type questions, and only a few weeks to figure out the answers before the hotel pilot began. It was the perfect time for a sprint. The sprint is GV's unique five-day process for answering crucial questions through prototyping and testing ideas with customers. It's a greatest hits of business strategy, innovation, behavioral science, design, and more, packaged into a step-by-step -step process that any team can use. The Savvy Oak team considered dozens of ideas for their robot, then used structured decision-making to select the strongest solutions without groupthink. They built a realistic prototype in just one day. And for the final step of the sprint, they recruited target customers and set up a makeshift research lab at a nearby hotel. We'd love to tell you that we, the authors, were the genius heroes of this story. It'd be wonderful if we could swoop into any company and dish out brilliant ideas that would transform it into a breakout success. Unfortunately, we are not geniuses. Savvy Oak's sprint worked because of the real experts, the people who were on the team all along. We just gave them a process to get it done. Here's how the Savvy Oak sprint went down. And if you're not a roboticist yourself, don't worry. We use the same exact sprint structure for software, services, marketing, and other fields. First, the team cleared a full week on their calendars. From Monday to Friday, they canceled all meetings, set the out-of-office responders on their email, and completely focused on one question. How should their robot behave around humans? Next, they manufactured a deadline. Savvy Oak made arrangements with the hotel to run a live test on the Friday of their sprint week. Now the pressure was on. There were only four days to design and prototype a working solution. On Monday, Savvy Oak reviewed everything they knew about the problem. Steve talked about the importance of guest satisfaction, which hotels measure and track religiously. If the relay robot boosted satisfaction numbers during the pilot program, hotels would order more robots. But if that number stayed flat or fell, and the orders didn't come in, their fledgling business would be in a precarious position. Together we created a map to identify the biggest risks. Think of this map as a story. Guest meets robot. Robot gives guest toothbrush. Guest falls for robot. Along the way were critical moments when robot and guest might interact for the first time in the lobby, in the elevator, in the hallway, and so on. So where should we spend our effort? With only five days in the sprint, you have to focus on a specific target. Steve chose the moment of delivery. Get it right, and the guest is delighted. Get it wrong, and the front desk might spend all day answering questions from confused travelers. One big concern came up again and again. The team worried about making the robot appear too smart. We're all spoiled by C-3PO and Wally, -E, explained Steve. We expect robots to have feelings and plans, hopes and dreams. Our robot is just not that sophisticated. If guests talk to it, it's not going to talk back. And if we disappoint people, we're sunk. On Tuesday, the team switched from problem to solutions. Instead of a raucous brainstorm, people sketched solutions on their own. And it wasn't just the designers. Tessa Lau, the chief robot engineer, sketched. So did Izumi Yuskawa, the head of business development, and Steve, the CEO. By Wednesday morning, sketches and notes plastered the walls of the conference room. Some of the ideas were new, but some were old ideas that had once been discarded or never thought through. In all, we had 23 competing solutions. How could we narrow them down? In most organizations, it would take weeks of meetings and endless emails to decide. But we had a single day. Friday's test was looming and everybody could sense it. We used voting and structured discussion to decide quickly, quietly, and without argument.